I know all of you are wanting to reach home. I don't know how long we should keep it today. <laughs> Good. What shall we talk about today? All right. Dear Guru Raj, what is the nature of grief in the loss of a loved one? <clears throat> what is the nature of grief? in the loss of a loved one. First, we must know what grief is all about. Mm -hmm. And we must also know what a loved one is all about. Could you, the hum. Uh, yes, where does grief stem from? Mm -hmm. Does it stem from love, really? Hmm? Or, does, or does it stem from a supposed love, which is not a true love? Hmm? And how many people can truly love? Hmm? Many people do grieve because of the loss of a companion. Many do grieve because of the loss of a child which they regarded to be their possession. Hmm? So there are many causes for grief. Hmm? There is one sect in India hmm, that has a party when someone passes away that from this misery, this person is going into another plane where there is less misery. That is what they believe. And when a child is born, then they grieve that, oh, this soul has now come into the realms of worldly misery. Hmm? Well, that is, of course, their belief. What we are interested in is the nature of grief. What causes grief really? Hmm? And that which causes grief is hmm, not a loss so much of the loved one, but a loss to one's self. Hmm? It is not the loss of the loved one that causes the grief. Hmm? To a certain extent, yes. But the grief is the loss hmm, to oneself. Now, what has one lost? That is the question. One has lost companionship. Hmm? One has lost the person on whom one could be dependent. Hmm? One has lost someone that provided the bread and beans. Mm -hmm. So, grief is caused by personal inadequacy, insecurity, and uh, possession. The possessive idea one has in mind of the one that has left us causes the greatest grief. Now, it is quite natural to miss someone that has gone away. Now, if that grief was genuine, hmm, then it would last until you leave this world. Hmm? Why does time heal the wound, so to speak? Why does time lessen the grief? Because it was not genuine grieving. Hmm? It was the loss of a particular kind of need that was felt at that time. <laughs> and getting used to the idea of not having that need anymore in the passage of time, one grieves less and less and less. So from the angle I'm speaking of, it is this, that grief is mostly selfish. Hmm? My son, my father, my mother, my daughter, my this, my that. Hmm? 
You say it as if you possessed it. Hmm? Now, if you lost a piece of furniture, a valuable antique or a real Ming vase hmm, of the 14th century, hmm, and it broke, you will also feel grief hmm, that this prized possession of mine is lost. Hmm? And the quality of the grief would be the same. Hmm? So where does grief stem from? It stems from the sense of possession. And all possession is selfish. Hmm? Now, how would a selfless person react hmm? at the loss of a loved one? The selfless person who would react in this manner that we are all wayfarers on this path. Hmm? We are all co-travelers, young or old. Hmm? And someone would have to reach the end quicker than others. Hmm? Someone will have to reach the end far sooner. That is the understanding that has to be developed for grief not to be so intense. Hmm? For there's only one certainty in life, and that is death. It is unavoidable. Hmm? Anything that is born must die. Hmm? If a person dies five years earlier, or five years later, or ten years later, twenty years later, Hmm? What difference is it going to make in the whole scheme of things? Hmm? For when a person passes over, you are <coughs> in timeless time. And the time we measure here hmm? is of no importance at all in that plane of existence. Hmm? In that plane of existence, there is no time and the subtle body of a person that has passed over will free, will feel so much freer. Hmm? There would be a great sense of freedom hmm? because it has unloosened itself from the physical changes, hmm? from the physical chains, rather. Hmm? So, the person that passes over is in a much more happier state than one can imagine. Hmm? The greatest thing people fear in life is death. And as I said, that's the only certainty you can expect of life. Hmm? Why do they fear death? It is because they feel that they are losing their personality the ego of which they are so possessive. Hmm? And yet, it is the very ego that's causing misery. misery. So, you are possessive of your own misery. You do not want to let your own misery go. Therefore, you fear death. Hmm? Now, there are some books, Life After Life and Life After Death and things like that. Hmm? Yeah, and I read some articles, some reviews on those books. They maintain it was a research done by doctors, and many of you might have read them. Hmm? They say that every person, at the time of death, a light approaches them hmm? and takes them to another sphere. Hmm? That is a fallacy. It is not true. I've died thousands of times consciously and gone beyond and have come back by will. So I can tell you what actually happens. Hmm? What actually happens is this, that what you see as that light coming to fetch you is not a foreign entity. Hmm? But it is the projection of your own pure spirit, which is light, hmm? that you meet up against. Hmm? That which you have failed 
While you're living, you find it at the moment of death, where you come face to face with, the, with your own spirit, which abides in you, that light which abides in you. And I've seen that light hmm? during the living states, huh? as well as during death states. Hmm? Now an experience in India, I went through an experiment Mm-hmm. And I did it just for the sake of an experiment mm-hmm. where I got myself buried for six days mm-hmm. on the verge, on the brink of death. The total heartbeat slowed down so much as if it was imperceptible. One breath taken only before the certain practice was done and they put me 12 feet deep in a box, sitting up position. And when I came out, I was fresh as a daisy. So that one very breath contains so much prana or life force or vital energy that could keep you alive for quite a few months. I did it as an experiment. I heard it done so much and I said, let me try. And I did it. Hmm? So, with the heart just slowly pulsating, hmm? I did it as an experiment and there was also a purpose. I had to fix up some of these arteries. Hmm. So, standing there on the brink of life and death, I could view on both sides. Hmm? And the other side, if people would only understand that the other side, the subtler side, is so much more pleasant. There is no suffering on the other side of this life. Hmm? Because although you take the subtle body with you, and drop the grosser physical body, the subtle body does not suffer in that state because it goes through a process of evaluation. Hmm? And there is no evolutionary forces there to push you on. There are no conflicts there, while with the body there are conflicts. Hmm? One part of the mind is pulling you this way and the other part of the mind is pulling you in another direction and you are fragmented. All these conflicts are there, all filtered through what we call the brain. But on that side, only the mind is left. The brain is not there where these conflicts can be filtered through. The organ is left behind Yet the mind, intermixing all the experiences, goes through a process of evaluation and not evolution. In that stage, you don't evolve, for you are not complete enough to evolve. You have to have a body to evolve, combined with the mind and the spirit. So, after this body is dropped, The mind exists empowered by the spirit. And when evaluation takes place, Mm 